Christian church. I haven't quite figured out how to make this day so important that people will stay home from the start of summer celebrations. And we all know that they have to be back to work on Tuesday. They aren't kidding anybody. I've never figured that out. And, you know, I figure in the next 10 years of ministry, I'm probably not going to figure that out either. So that's going to be somebody else's job. Memorial Day is one of those days in the church that pastors, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest, lots of senior pastors take Memorial Day off. And it's just part of tradition. And I think that's too bad. Because I think the way that uh, we, we fill this room on days like Memorial Day is we have meaningful services like we're having today. And we get people to say, hey, we do a really great job of honoring both God and our country at the same time. And we invite people to be with us. Memorial Day is one of those days uh, in the church because, you know, there's this great debate between holy days and national days. And yet, I ask the question, why does that have to be a debate? Because almost always a debate is one for and one against, or opposing sides, left and right. And in reality, if I read my Bible correctly, and I believe I do, of course you're all surprised by that, I'm sure, this is one of those days that's a both and. It's a win-win. And I'm going to tell you why today. You know, Memorial Day is one of those days that, uh, quite frankly, um, is usually seen as the start of summer. And churches go, well, attendance is going downhill. And we're a little down today. We're a little light. But that's okay. And it's okay because... Quite frankly, I'm going to tell you one of the things that I really believe is that every Sunday when I step up here to preach, the people who God wants to hear the message I have to bring are here. So turn to a neighbor and say, God must have wanted you here today. <laughs> All right, so I have a question for you. I didn't say carry on a whole conversation. I said, one neighbor, not the whole row. How many of you have a perfect memory? Just me, and I was trying to get you to do it, John. I want to tell you something about memory. It's really important. Memory is important because in the closing of an eye and the snap of a finger, you can be a child again. Memory is really important because you can just pause for just a second and you can be back at the altar of your marriage or you can be at your beloved funeral or you can be like I do every once in a while. I close my eyes and I find myself at Willow Lake State Park surrounded by God's great, amazing creation. And I never have to move from this spot. Memory is a huge and wonderful gift from God. It was, I was actually reminded of that last night. I went to, uh, I, I have traveled the last three days. Don't I look well-traveled? I've traveled from here to there and back again. And there includes Clovis and Portales, New Mexico. That's as far as I was going to go. Now, 
We didn't drive straight there and straight back. We don't ever do anything the easy way. We kind of circled around this way and saw Amarillo and all the things up here along the north side of Texas. And then we circled on down into Clovis. And then the next day we got, no, that night we actually got to Portales. And then we went back to Corvallis or Clovis because that's where the hotel room was. And then on Saturday, I came across from Portales and I went to Lubbock and Sweetwater and Abilene and stopped at Eastland to see the very first church I ever was the pastor at full time. First Christian church in Eastland. It was a great congregation of people. They loved being a student pastor and when I left, the next guy they hired, they hired full time. And he's been there almost ever since. Then I got back in my car. I took some pictures. You'll see that those on Facebook if you do Facebook. And then I came on across and stopped and looked over the valley as I was driving and then came on into town. And Last night I got home. You know, I'm one of those guys, I can take a six-hour trip and turn it into nine. And I was okay with that because it was meaningful and it stirred memories to stop in Eastland and to see some of the things that I was a part of. But most of you know that, um, well, you may or may not know, when, when Sheila arrived at the airport, I brought her flowers at the airport, and I took her yellow roses. It seemed somehow appropriate in Texas. I have, I have stayed away from yellow roses, though. I'm going to tell you the truth. I've not given yellow roses to Sheila or to anybody else because yellow roses hold a special place in my mind and in my heart. They were my mother's flowers. And over the years, you've seen me raise roses. None of my flowers have been yellow roses. I've decided that I need to buy a yellow rose bush and see if I can keep it alive. Because I'll, I'll be honest, my rose bushes is just if I can keep it alive, it's a good thing. If they produce flowers, it's a great thing. But last night, I wasn't really thinking about this. And I got home, and I was immediately reminded of my mother. For before we had left, Sheila had taken her roses and... She had turned them upside down, taken them out of the water, turned them upside down, and hung them from the um, chandelier in my little dining room. And as soon as I walked into the room, I was reminded of my mother. Do you all understand that picture? How? Did I do anything? I walked into the room. Memory is important. Some of our memories are really happy ones, and, and some, my memories, most of my memories of my mom are exceedingly happy. You all understand that. But you all know, also have memories that aren't so happy, that, that bring a tear to your eye. And sometimes my memory of my mother does that. You know about tears of joy, and you know about tears of sorrow. And if you're like me, those memories are treasures. Those memories are meant to hold us together. Now I'm going to tell you also, there are some very practical things about memories. For example... Without your memory, you wouldn't know if the red light means stop or go. Right? Without your memory, you wouldn't know your husband's name. Of course, some of you forget it on purpose. I understand that. 
Memories are practical, practical because without them, we don't remember those important days like anniversaries and birthdays, which are also important. So memories are practical, but I'm going to ask you the really <coughs> important question. How many here have ever forgotten anything? How many of you at some point have, has, have really forgotten something important? If you're a man and your hand's not up. I'm not saying your, your spouses haven't forgotten too, but being a man, I, am, I know. What have you forgotten? Well, the list could be really long, couldn't it? I know somebody in this room that's going to get a whole bunch of apologies I've already been told. Reminded me of this man. His name's John, and he used to have a serious memory problem. One day, John ran into his friend Bill, and, and he says, Hey, Bill, do you know I used to have a terrible memory, right? Bill said, yeah, you did. You couldn't even remember my name most of the time. He said, well, I went to a seminar, and, and, and now I have a great memory. And, and Bill says, cool, what was the name of the seminar? You know what? My wife went to the seminar with me. Let me ask her. So he turned to his wife, who was over here, and then he turned back to Bill, and he said, hey, Bill, What's the name of that flower that has a long stem and thorns and is usually red? And Bill says, oh, you mean a rose? Yes, he says, hey, Rose? <laughs> what was the name of that seminar we went to about memory? There are events and names and places and times that we should never forget. And I believe Memorial Day commemorates one of those and more of those. Memorial Day briefly began or started near the end of the Civil War. There's debate over who started it and where it started, but we know that it began somewhere around the end of the Civil War when the practice of placing flowers on military graves began to spread throughout both the North and the South. And across the country, it began being called Decoration Day. Then after World War II, it became a national holiday dedicated to remembering those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms you and I enjoy. But people tend to be forgetful. People like me, and probably like some of you, oftentimes need help to jog your memory. We laughed at the story of John and Bill because we know John and Bill probably in our families. And the worst thing is we might be John or Bill or both. As we dedicated the Bibles, I suggested today that these were books of memorial. These were books of God's word and God's memory lies within them. We find over and over in the stories of Scripture the idea and image of memorial. One of my favorites is the story of Noah. You know the story of Noah. God comes and he wipes out the earth and rains and rains and rains. I thought it was happening again yesterday between Sweetwater and Abilene, just so you know, but I got to Abilene and it stopped raining. And then... God said, no more, never again am I going to do this. And he gave a memorial, and that memorial was called a rainbow. Whenever we see a rainbow, God says, you will remember that I have promised not 
to destroy the world again ever by, by water. We heard about another memorial that was read from Joshua. Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land, across the Jordan River. And we remember the story of the ark being brought to the Jordan River and the priest walking in and the Jordan splitting so that they could walk across on dry land. And, and they were given the instructions as they walked through the Jordan to pick up 12 stones. And each tribe had a priest and each one picked up a stone. And as they came across the river and as they got the people of God back into the promised land, they built an altar out of the 12 stones. And, and God gave those wonderful words of instruction that when your children ask what these stones are for, tell them that they are a memorial to all that God has done. <clears throat> the church is full of memorials. If you look around our sanctuary, the, the windows, the, the banners, the, the whole building is a memorial of one sort or another in honor and to the glory of God. We have a book of memorials that usually sits on a stand outside my office. And I will be honest, in the 18 or 19 months I've been your pastor, I have seen people looking through the book of memorials less than a handful of times. We celebrate a memorial every time we gather in this room. For we gather as the people of God to celebrate all that God has done. Two memorials come to my mind that the people of God have, have celebrated over the years. The first is the memorial of Passover. You know, way back in the Old Testament. The people have been slaves in Egypt and, and, and Moses is there. And Pharaoh is hesitant, even reticent about letting his slaves go. Until finally, God sends that last plague. And in that last plague, he says, every firstborn male child will die. But not yours. For I want you to go out into your flock and find the best one-year-old lamb the cleanest, most perfect lamb. And boy, I think that's really an important message for us because I think sometimes we bring less than our very best to God. I think God calls us to bring our very best offering no matter what it is to God for God's use. And, and in this story, we are told to bring, the, the Jews were told to bring their very best lamb and to kill it to drain its blood into a basin and then to roast it but before they were allowed to eat the lamb God said the last thing you should do is get a brush made of hyssop and dip it into the blood and put it on your door jam and over your door jam for this night I am going to pass over the land of Egypt and in homes where there is blood on the door jam, I will pass over and all will be safe. But it wasn't ended there. Then God said, and every year, you are to celebrate my passing over, the Passover by sacrificing a lamb and partaking of a meal of remembrance. A memorial. 
and of course the second memorial that comes most near and dear to my heart really comes from that last memorial and that is the memorial we find at the Lord's table when we gather around this table we gather as the people and the family of God and here we remember that Jesus took the bread on the night that he was betrayed and he gave thanks for it and he broke it, and he gave it to them, to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me. And then after the meal, the cup, and after giving thanks, he passes it to his disciples, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant. Do this in memory of me. Each day we gather here as the family of God in this place and we celebrate this meal of memory, this memorial. Each week we are reminded of all that God has done for us and we celebrate the grace and the love and the peace and the hope that this table brings us. We gather at this table and we are reminded of all that God has done, all that, all that God has given to us, all that God has prepared us for. And so when we gather on this Memorial Day weekend, we realize that memorials are not that foreign to us. Memorials are not that strange they are a part of who we are and so we set this day aside we set this weekend aside not for family barbecues not for summer kickoffs but for memory but for remembering for you see, this table and the Passover reminds us of the freedom and the grace that God gives us so that as we live in this place, we can celebrate the freedoms that others have provided for us through their acts of love and of service. We know people in our midst who are serving currently. We know people who have died in the act of providing our freedom. We know people who have loved their country and loved their God enough to be willing to pay with the ultimate price. And so when we come together as a body, as the body of Christ in this place on Memorial Day, we come knowing that our memory is very important. That our memorials are more than just a holiday, but that they are a part of our story. And so we gather this day to remember what God has done and what our loved ones have done on our behalf and what will be done for us in the future. May we never, ever 